Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys have been doing amazing and that is the truth. If you're new to the channel, my name's Chris. I call these fireside chats about faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of these talks are my testimony or what the Holy Spirit is placing upon my heart talk about. Things that I've been through and it's very, very interesting as we're getting this cranked up. So there was a big thunderstorm last night. Lightning, I mean, talking the whole nine yards. A lot of rain. It's been summertime here where I am. It's been hot and dry. We've had breezes, but then all of a sudden the temperature just dropped and right now I got a heating blanket on my lap which feels really nice and I just had a delicious nap like an hour ago I woke up had to remake the bed behind me but it's now kind of like chilly we had the fresh rain like washing and renewing some people don't really like the rain and I understand especially if you live in a climate where it's like always rainy I need the sun especially after like two or three days of that I'm like where's the sunshine I want to walk around I want to get my vitamin D and my morning prayer time walking has been a game changer for me. I also love Dr. Andrew Huberman, and it's all about getting morning UV light into your eyes for your stadium rhythm, I believe you pronounce it. And so what I do on those walks is it doesn't take me that long. I just walk around my property, 10, 15 minutes, slow walk. I'm in the country, so but you can walk around your neighborhood. I walk with the dog and I just talk with the Lord the whole time while I'm getting that morning sunshine. First and foremost, that is a beautiful thing to boost my mental game, my mood, before I go into devotions in the morning time. And let me just talk about that just real quickly here. I know some people, and they're all over the board with different schedules, busy here, busy there, firefighters, nurse, 312 shifts and like no time, kids in the morning. And what I like to do is I like to pick up examples of people that have children, a good friend, he has children and he lets us know that he gets up really early in the morning before the kids so that he can have that one-on-one -on -one time alone with the Lord before the children do get up. It definitely is a sacrifice, definitely takes discipline. Some people have more of a relaxed schedule where they could do an hour or two every day before they go into work because they work from home. But just personally, I've done the nighttime thing and I get a little too tired. My mind's kind of wind down, winded it down. And I really like first thing in the morning, first cup of coffee, prayer time, oatmeal. It just turns into this beautiful time with the Lord before you get your day started, before work takes over, and definitely try it. Try it in the morning time. I think you're going to really like it. This heating blanket, actually, I'm reviewing, so this is kind of a double dip. So not only am I making this video for this channel, but I have a product review DIY house project channel as well. It's always linked in the description box below where I do all these kind of projects, these slat walls, accent walls, uh, installing new custom windows, etc. That's all on the other channel. I really like this thing. This thing is really nice, especially for a nice cozy day, as you can see kind of the light coming in. Well, I got notes. What is a fireside chat about faith without Bibles? And I got my journal right here and I got my notes. Now, something to keep in mind is that this is well overdue. The Lord wants me to focus on this channel. And this is, I've mentioned this several times, but this is my passion channel. This is my passion project, I like to call it, where it has done very well with subscribers, but not like the DIY channel. And I really enjoy editing vlogs. I really enjoy ministry videos now. But with ministry videos, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've seen a lot of others because what I that's what I love about YouTube. I love how people are now like making videos of encouraging words. There's prophets on there as well that are just talking about things the Lord has shown them and told them. You do have to be a little careful and you have to take everything back to the Lord and test the spirit to make sure that they're speaking on behalf of the Lord. And a lot of these messages are not for everyone, but you know, sometimes it's hey, I just want to hear this encouraging word about like meeting my wife. Oh yeah, that word's for me. And it's it, it might not be, it might be, or it might not be, but you definitely need to test the spirit and you need to ask the Lord, is this word for me? So if you're finding my channel through that means, just be a little careful. I love to have encouraging words. There were There was a day like two weeks ago where I was just beat up. And to be honest with you, I 
put on like three encouraging words, it was like on the point of giving up where you're just like, dude, this is hard, man. Like spiritual warfare, like the attacks, it's hard. And this woman came on, she was an older woman. She came on and she's just started encouraging me with don't give up. And I'm like, thank you, Lord. That's the word I just, I literally just needed to hear. And I felt fantastic afterwards. And so that's my goal with these videos is to encourage you. I really feel the Lord leading me into a life where the word talks about Barnabas. And let's back up scripture with that one, because Barnabas is mentioned in the Bible. Uh, him and Paul had a disagreement over Mark when Mark went back and uh, some people say abandoned their missionary journey, but he just went back. And then Barnabas wanted to retake Mark on another missionary journey. And then Paul and him got in a, a little bit of a disagreement and they actually parted ways because of that. They reconciled because it says, I'm paraphrasing, but it says like Paul talks about uh, Mark is of use now, uh, so bring him along or something like that for maybe their other, uh, their third missionary journey. So in Acts chapter four, verse 36, it says, thus Joseph, who was also called by the apostles Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus. So what's really interesting is that Barnabas, which means, his name means, the son of encouragement, but his real name is Joseph, who was also called by the apostles Barnabas. So like Peter, his original name was Cephas, and now it's Peter, because the Lord renamed him Peter from Cephas. Well, the apostles named him Barnabas from Joseph. So for years now, I've been praying for the favor of Joseph over my life because whatever Joseph managed, even at Potiphar's house, it was blessed. The Lord blessed Joseph's work and everything that Joseph managed was blessed. So I was always like, Lord, would you bless me with the favor of Joseph? And he said, I have, I have. And then I kept praying, Lord, like, would you continue to have your hand a blessing of Joseph upon me? Now, fast forward to, uh, <laughs> to this year where I'm learning more about Joseph. I'm learning more about Joshua leading the people. And that came with a price. Joseph came with a price. And you're like, ah, I've heard the story, sold into slavery and then was sold to Potiphar, and then accused of rape, and then back into prison, and then the guy who was supposed to like get him out, the baker or the wine cup bearer, he forgot about him. And we've heard the story, but like he went through the thick of it, like for a long time, and we'll get more into that. So the Lord's put it on my heart to be an encourager. And that's always been my personality. That's who I've been. I've always been this bright, airy guy. Of course, there's, you know, days where you're like, oh, woe is me type thing. We've talked about that before. And you just gotta be very careful about the downward spiral. And you have to speak life into yourself. You have to speak life from the tongue, not death. And we're gonna get into that too. <laughs> what I'm getting at with this point is that I've heard other YouTubers that are giving encouraging words, that are doing ministry work on the YouTube front, and they're just being honest about it. That's why you're hearing about it. I don't know if you'll ever hear certain pastors or leaders talk about some of the things that the YouTubers do because it's more kind of just a camera, so to speak. I mean, everyone knows that there's some people watching. If you have a small channel, then it's, you know, a few. If it's a large channel, it's many. But be faithful in what you have, and Lord willing, the channel will grow. But it's a little bit more maybe letting your guard down, maybe if, um, I don't know, I, I don't wanna put words into someone else's mouth or ideas that aren't true, but I just think sometimes you can be a little bit more raw with some of these videos and the people on YouTube are doing that than telling your whole congregation that you're anxious. Um, because then maybe everyone's like, well, why are you anxious? The Bible says not to be anxious. Well, <laughs> during the spiritual warfare that I've experienced since pretty much the beginning of the year, 2024, where it's not all the time, but it comes in waves. And I, I do want to state this because if you're going through anything like this, where like it feels like a roller coaster, like you're on top of the world, God's got me, and then all of a sudden you feel beat up and like just what in the world is happening? A lot of the times it's spiritual warfare. You definitely have to understand what's happening here as well as your heart and what you're speaking over yourself, because there is life and death in the tongue, and we'll back that up with scripture in just a second. Anxiousness is a real thing. Depression is a real thing. Like these things that entrap people, when you have never experienced it before, you're like, oh, you know, just well, what, are you, what are you talking about? You know, it's like, God got you, you're okay. Get, you know, let's get up and go. But I'm hearing more and more stories, and people are just being honest about it, where they've never had a bout with depression, and then all of a sudden it's hard to get out of bed. 
I've mentioned her before. She's a young woman full of the Lord, and her name is Deborah, and she actually just put out a video about this where she's actually getting attacked on the forefront and had a couple days where it was really tough. And I'm very like, I'm sorry that happened, but I was encouraged because she knows it's spiritual warfare. She went to the Word of God, what is truth, and that's what I'm doing in my own life, and I want you to do as well, is that when the enemy comes at you, he can come... He doesn't know the future, but he knows your past. And so if there's fears, if you had like a childhood trauma, let me talk about that for one second. So I went through a really interesting stage of my life back in fifth or sixth grade. I was very fearful to throw up in class. And so I would actually psych my mind out so much where I actually would fill a stomach ache. And I went to the teacher and I said, I have a stomach ache, I need to go, I feel like I'm I'm, I'm gonna throw up, uh, I wanna go to the nurse. And then she would send me to the nurse and right after I got out of the classroom, and this was fifth grade, this started in fifth grade, I would walk to the nurse's office, feeling slightly better because like kinda know what's coming. And what I mean by that is I got to the nurse's office. I called my mom or dad or they called. Then I would hear them. They would hang up and they would say, Chris, your dad or your mom, they're coming to get you. And immediately when I heard those words, all symptoms went away. And it was really weird. I tried to like fake it even when my parents would pick me up. And sometimes I would even psych myself back up a little bit to like get a stomach ache again. And I'm talking it's all here. Now I know there are definitely some health concerns that you might be going through, and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will be healed according to his word in John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. We're going to get to that in just a second. And this was like an ongoing thing, like not every day, but it would like come in waves for like half a year in fifth grade. And then in sixth grade, it kind of turned into this weird thing where like I would try to go to the bathroom because I thought I had a stomach ache and I thought I had to go to the bathroom. And then one of my classmates walked in and he knew I was in one of the stalls. Then they started making fun of me. And then it was like this whole thing. Anyway, how that actually recovered was I went into junior high and realized that I can't do that anymore. Like there's now seven different teachers, seven different classrooms. And it was really weird. Like I was still super young then and I was praying. My parents were praying at their Bible study meeting for me. And of course, power prayer, absolutely. But it was almost like I just snapped out of it. I just grew out of it. It was really weird. We went back to go see my sixth grade teacher with some of my other friends. And I told him, I said, yeah, like everything I was going through, like it's it's done, it's over with. And it was just this like, I can't do that anymore. So I'm not going to, you know? And I think for the first maybe like couple days, it was like, oh my gosh, like what happens if I do get a stomach ache? What happens if I feel nauseous? And it's just like, can't do that. These are people, (laughs) these are new people I don't know. Like this is not one class all day. This is like seven different classes and I just kind of grew out of it. What I'm getting at with that story is that fear of health. The enemy has now tried to put back in me at 42 years old. So fifth and sixth grade to now 42 years old and the enemy is using dirty old tricks. Back then, I got a little inflammation from a workout and next thing you know, you're thinking it's the worst possible scenario. You have some uncomfortable gas and you think it's something wrong with your GI tract. And this is like mind boggling, but these are real experiences, real emotions and he's dirty and we have to put on the full armor of God every day to combat him. Not only that, but continue to know what is truth. So what I do in certain circumstances, if I'm getting a little anxious or if I'm feeling just like, man, I'm kind of beat up, like there's definitely some spiritual warfare happening. Number one, I put on the full armor of God every day and I also put it on at nighttime while I sleep because the enemy is dirty and he'll give you dreams to like even scare you. He's given me like raunchy dreams. That's not from the Lord. That's not from my heart. And so understand that he can actually come that way as well. So definitely be careful what you're watching as well. Don't watch any of these freaky movies that make your mind turn. I know sometimes like eating weird foods give you weird dreams, but you know a dream is from the Lord when it's peaceful, good, admirable, and right, when you're dreaming about things you're praying for. And then on the other hand, you wake up and you're like, 
dude, that was a weird dream. Some dreams are just weird, but I, I believe there can be spiritual attack as well. Definitely with some weird sexual dreams as well that you got to rebuke, man. Those are not from the Lord. That's not from my heart. I'm not looking at any of that stuff. Praise the Lord. And so that's when you definitely know it's a spiritual attack. So I got my notes here right in front of me here. And I just want to talk about restoration of joy. So this is something that I have been experiencing. And I know I talk about this a lot, pretty much every video. But when you've gone through something that really shapes your walk with the Lord and has pressed you so much closer into your relationship with the Lord, sometimes that's totally okay to talk about. But with my divorce, definitely watch my first video. And I know some people are not gonna watch that, but I go into super depth. But I waited for reconciliation. I waited, prayed, fasted, and uh, she decided to remarry. And so the Holy Spirit said, release. And so I biblically waited. She never reconciled, never repented and turned and came back to the marriage. So I just wanna say that because a lot of people won't mention that. And then you're like, oh, you're divorced, but the Bible says, you know, da 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 da. And so I just wanna say that it was what the Lord had me do. He had me wait after she divorced me and I waited for reconciliation. And so I just have to give a little caveat to that because it can throw people off sometimes. And they're like, oh no, this, this guy's not living a biblical life. He's divorced, yeah, psh, you know. So anyway, restoration of joy. I have to say that with my divorce because that's, and, and I let the enemy take joy too long. So let me break that down real quickly. So I had so much hope and joy and peace and patience while I waited during that time. It was like so much energy was put into that. Lord, restore. I see a beautiful sunset. I go on a bike ride, Lord, restore, restore. And then it didn't happen. And I was like, good night. Like, where does all this energy go into? And make a long story short, even during that time of waiting, the enemy was trying to steal my joy. Like even trips, like I've always been this kind of guy, like, oh yeah, I'm down. Like, oh, snowboard trip. Yeah, I'm down. And I have fun while I'm doing it. But it's kind of like, I remember even during the thick of divorce, like it was one of my friend's weddings. And I was like, all right, let me just in. And I didn't have any anxious back then but it was just this like weird thing of like I don't know but I was I, I clearly remember okay let me just get through this wedding we'll get back into you know the uh, my routine or whatever let's let you know let's just let's just get through this and it wasn't like I didn't like him or anything I love the guy but it was it was just like weddings and it, okay let's just let's just do this and let's let's get through it and then get to the other side like I don't know if you want like everything fixed and so that's why you couldn't like process and but anyway the enemy was like stealing my joy so I'm gonna be honest with you like since divorce and it's been years now there's only been like a few things I've been excited for but that was because I was allowing the enemy to do that like oh yeah you know let's Let's, let's go snowboarding. You know, that sounds fun. Oh yeah, let's go, you know, here. You know, that, that kind of sounds fun. And I was always having fun when I was there, but it was always this like side thing of like, if it got canceled, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Like I'll just get back into my work routine and not, not a work, I'm not a workaholic by any means, but it was just, yeah, it was just weird. And I was telling my brother and our friend this when we were going up river surfing the other day, the enemy has taken a lot of joy and I'm praying for Joel too that what the locusts have eaten would be replaced and restored, but not just restored, more blessed than it ever was before. So if you're going through something like this and you just feel like your joy, your happiness, I know happiness is, I know we kick around the word happiness a lot, but true joy in the Lord, that's a choice. And again, I think I was letting the enemy have too much privilege with that instead of waiting for it. Like, no, let's go seek it. So let me give you a story. Just several weeks ago, we were river surfing. We were having a great time. River surfing is where like you're in an actual river and they've built up this wave and you actually surf this wave. I have vlog videos on this channel about that. And there's something healing about the water as well, but just going home, stretching my minds at peace, it's just beautiful joy. Which brings me to Proverbs chapter 18, verses 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. <laughs> How good is that? And those who love it will eat its fruits. Once again, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And right now in my morning devotions, I'm doing a lot of research. I'm, I'm reading the Bible on these verses we're discussing today. And it's absolutely beautiful. Now what the world calls affirmations, what the Christian, what the believer calls biblical affirmations. So we're literally just quoting scripture 
to ourselves. We're speaking scripture out to our work, out to our family, out to our healing, out to our loved ones. We're speaking scripture to the enemy himself, just like Jesus did when he was tempted in the wilderness. And this leads me to, especially if you're watching this and you're like, man, I, I don't have the relationship with the Lord that I want to have, or I'm scared and this can be spiritual warfare on the front of this as well. But let me just tell you a story. So I've heard this several times from different people, but this story is definitely from my childhood. So one of my friend's dads, he and his son told us this because I don't think he, the dad ever said this, but the dad was always, the dad would never go into a church because like three different times, every time he went to a service, something bad would happen. I don't know how soon it was, but something bad happened. And I don't know exactly what it was, what he defined as bad. So he associated church and God with, if I pursue that, and I go to that Christmas service, that Easter service, something bad will happen. Or every time I open up my word and start pursuing God, something bad happens. And that is full-blown spiritual warfare. And definitely take the time to break that as well and pray over that and say, God, take that stronghold away because that is a lie of the devil. That is not God's heart. God's not a, a God of wrath that he says, come to me and bad things are going to happen. No, his word says, come to me, you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So once again, the enemy will come in with a lie, a worry, anxiousness, stop. What is truth? What does the Bible say? And then you start memorizing these scriptures and you start speaking them out. Every morning when I wake up in this bed, Berea, my pup, is on this side. I'm over here on this side. And I wake up and I say, good morning, Lord. Good morning, Berea. It's going to be a great day. And this is going to be the best year of my life so far. And I keep speaking that because even non-believers, scientists, neuroscientists talk about what you repeatedly say will be ingrained in your subconscious. And there's a bunch of science to it, but there's just some awesomeness that happens. So if you're in a situation like my friend's dad, we're going to pray that through. We're definitely going to pray that through. So that is no more in the name of Jesus. So I want to talk about the authority that the Lord has given us because he's gone to the Father and now we have the Holy Spirit. So the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us if you're a believer and you've accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior, repented from your sins and turned to the Lord, asking him to come into your heart. And you can easily do that. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal every disease and every affliction. And I wrote down right here, Lord, you've given us this authority in John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. And you're like, Chris, but those were the disciples. Those people walked with Jesus. Those were hand chosen for that purpose. Well, let's go over to John chapter 14. And I'm reading from the ESV version of the Bible. And then I might pop around to the NLT. I really like the NLT as well. New Living Translation. So, Let's start in chapter 14, verse 10 of John. Do you not believe I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe in me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on the count, on the account of the works themselves. So believe by the miracle signs that you see me do. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what Jesus is saying. Believe on the account of the works themselves. This is what I love, and I've been quoting this scripture over what the Lord has promised me for my friends, for my family, for my future God-willing family and bride. Verse 12, truly, truly. He says it two times in the ESV version. In the NLT, he says, for I tell you the truth. This is Jesus talking now. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me, who's that? 
who's ever received Christ as their Savior, asked him into their heart, repented from their sins, asked forgiveness from their sins, and now believes in the Lord. Whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. Did you pick up on that? You'll do the same. If you're saved and Jesus is your Savior, you will do the same works Jesus did. I think I've skipped over this verse. I think I've read it, but just like maybe the past several months, it really sank in. No, Lord, your word, which is truth, says that whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. What does that mean? Jesus died on the cross, rose again, he went to the Father. And the day of Pentecost was the day the Holy Spirit came. Now we have the Holy Spirit living in us. We invite him in. This is all part of receiving Christ as our Lord and Savior, asking for forgiveness of our sins and repenting from our sins, like I keep saying. Let me back it up. Greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, let me break that down real quickly here. When you're walking in the Lord in a close relationship, there's communication between you and the Lord. You're not grieving the Spirit by living in sin. And the Bible talks about, I'm paraphrasing, but you can come to the Lord with boldness and you can receive what you ask for because you don't feel guilty. Totally paraphrasing. Don't know where that scripture is. And I've talked about this in one of my other videos before. Now, the Lord knows all our needs. So if we're selfish with little, we're going to be selfish with much. So if you're asking for that Bentley on 24s with the new Gucci leather seats, probably won't happen. Slim chance, but probably won't happen. But if you're asking for things that are that please the Father's heart, salvation for your family friends, healing for your family friends, healing for yourself, if you're an excellent steward with your home and you're praying for another home, whatever that particularly looks like in your own life, the Lord will, the Holy Spirit will direct your prayers. And that's what I believe you can ask for anything in the Lord's name. And I will do it. It says right here in Jesus name. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. And this is Jesus talking. So you ask Jesus for it so that the father may be glorified in the son. Let's go to verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be with you. That's the Holy Spirit. And in my little kind of title up above that says, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. Okay, I want to give you some more scripture regarding prayer and not giving up. This is Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 25. And Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And whatever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. So again, the world calls it manifestation, what we call prayer and believing that you've already received for what you asked for. It says right here, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Verse 24, Mark chapter 11. Matthew chapter seven, starting in verse seven, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you for everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be open. Or which one of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? He loves you. The enemy is such a liar. Yes, the Lord allows things to happen. He allowed things to be tested in Joseph's character. He's allowed things to happen in my life. David, I love the Psalms, cries out, God, where are you? God, where are you? And then starts praising the Lord. But you're faithful. You are good. This is a fantastic one. This is Luke chapter 11, starting in verse 5. And he said to them, which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, Lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot give up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his, this version says, impotence, 
Uh, I think the NLT version says like persistence. He will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Let me give you one more. This is Luke chapter 18, starting in verse one. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought to always pray and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in the city in that city who kept coming to him and saying give me justice against my adversary for a while he refused but afterward he said to himself though i neither fear god nor respect man yet because this widow keeps bothering me i will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming and the lord said hear what the unrighteous judge says and will not god give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night will he delay long over them i tell you he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? El Shaddai, Prince of Peace, man, you got in me. So faith is also a huge part. Obviously, faith, faith without works is dead, so we have to have works along with faith. But Jesus says in Mark chapter 9, starting in verse 22b, the second half, uh, this is the Father that talks about the Son being thrown into seizures, and it throws him into the fire. And that's a really cool sunset sun flare right there by the way so the boy has seizures and he's thrown into the fire and uh, the dad says but if you can do anything have compassion on us and help us and jesus says to him if you can all things are possible for one who believes immediately the father of the boy cried out and said i believe help my unbelief and so sometimes we have to just be honest with god say lord i believe but these doubts i'm having whatever it might be healing salvation for a family member whatever it might be i believe but help my doubt and then just talking about about faith there's also a lot of other scriptures that kind of talk about this but i just wanted to hit this one as well matthew chapter 8 starting in 26 and he said to them why are you afraid this was when they were in the boat and the storm was just tormenting waves save us lord we are perishing in verse 25 and he said to them why are you afraid O you of little faith then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea and there was a great calm and the men marveled saying what sort of man is this that even winds and sea obey him i don't want to be a man of little little faith. I want to be a man of faith. And what do I mean by that? I mean that I trust the word of God. I trust God at his word. He's not a liar. God is not a liar. His word does not come back void. It pierces bone and marrow. So I believe the word of God. Isaiah 53, 5, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. And Isaiah 64, this is the New Living Translation, 64 verse 4, For since the world began, no ear has heard, and no eye has seen, a God like you who works for those who wait for him. Him. Let me repeat that one more time. For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him. Friends, whoever you are, myself included, take that last scripture to heart. Take him at his word. Take the Lord at his word. Say, God, this is what your word says. I believe it by faith. I believe it. Your word says right here, who works for those who wait on him. That's again, the NLT translation. So I will wait on you. I will wait. Patience is hard. I'm waiting for some crazy promises to be fulfilled and God willing, I'll be able to testify about those very soon. And I believe I will by faith, just like the verses I've already talked to you about, about believing that I've already received it, thanking him for in advance, but it's the Lord's perfect timing with all this. And so patience definitely plays a key as well. So I just want to encourage you with those scriptures. I want to encourage you, the individual that's watching this right now, whoever you are, again, by his wounds, we are healed. So let's just jump straight on in prayer. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you. This has been encouraging to myself as well. And I don't want to just make these videos just to get content up. I really want to encourage the brethren and the church. And I ask you, Lord, for encouragement, Lord, over myself as well as we go through these days. I pray, Father, that these days would not be roller coasters, that we would be of sound mind. We would not live in fear. We would not live under anxiousness. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, I break off, cast off any depression over your church, Father, over your believers, Lord, over your people from head to toe, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Healing will happen. Healing will begin. Healing is in their body right now, Father. Anxiousness falls in the name of Jesus. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. We put the full armor of God on to protect us against the devil. Any demonic spirits coming against anything that we manage, our work, our family, our marriages, Lord, our children, business, friendship joy. We rebuke these demonic spirits. They have no authority. And you've given us this authority because you've gone to the Father. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. So Father, fill us with your joy. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your peace. Whoever's watching this, whenever they are watching it, Father, may you be glorified in their lives. May they have a testimony and may you continue to work in our lives and may we further the gospel of Jesus Christ with boldness, readiness, and may your peace that surpasses all understanding come over our minds and our hearts right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, friend, if you've watched this whole thing and you've never given your life to Christ and you're like, I want to pray that prayer, let's jump right on into it. Just repeat this prayer after me. Mean it in your heart, and God hears your prayer. Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask you for forgiveness of my sins. I ask you to wash me white as snow. I repent of my sins and I turn to you. And I ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life. Come into my heart and change me. Clean me. Purify me. Holy Spirit, live inside of me. I love you. Help me to know your heart and help me to grow in you. I receive you. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I'm looking forward to the amazing life we're going to have together. In the name of Jesus. I receive this by faith. Friend, if you just said that prayer, welcome to the family of God. It's not a magic prayer. Some people say it differently, but the key factor is accepting Jesus into your heart, asking forgiveness of your sins, putting your faith in Christ, and repenting and turning from your sin. What that means is you no longer do them after this prayer. If you've come back to the Lord, or if this is the first time giving your life to Christ, then we don't sit in our sin anymore. We don't log off of this video and go watch pornography anymore. We stop these things and we let Christ live inside of us. He's not taking away fun. He's giving you a better fulfilled life in him and keeping you from death and destruction with these sins. Now, I highly encourage you to get plugged into a Bible-believing church, find some good Christian friends, join a small group, meet up with some people, Christian mountain bikers, whatever that might be, do life together. It's a lot easier than doing it alone. You can encourage one another, you can help one another, you can be accountable to one another, and the Lord will clean up your life. If it's a mess right now, if there's a lot of sin, confess it. If you need to confess adultery, if you need to confess to your wife, if you need to confess whatever it might be, the Lord is with you, the Lord will be with you, and the Lord will get you through anything. You've given your life to him. Thank you guys so much for watching. God bless you all. I hope this has been an encouragement to you. Now, if it's not too late, I'm going to go mountain bike with my pup, which is right over here, and I look forward to speaking with you again on the next video.